Welcome to First United Methodist Church of Henrietta. It's a joy to have you in worship with us this morning uh, as we worship together online. Uh, hope that everyone is staying safe and warm today as we gather together for this time of prayer and worship. Uh, I'm Patrick, one of the pastors here, and I am grateful that you are with us today. A couple of announcements before we get started. First of all, be sure to check in with us uh, here on, on Facebook Live or in the comments of this video uh, so that you can, uh, so that we can greet one another this morning. And also, if you've not already done so already, please consider uh, setting up online giving during uh, this time that, we are, that we're together virtually. Uh, you can do so by going to our church website or you can always mail checks to the church at our P.O. Box, uh, P.O. Box 63 in here in, uh, that's right, the P.O. Box will be on in the description of this video at some point, so check, check back there if you have any questions about that. Uh, we're so grateful for all the ways that you support the, the life, mission, and ministry of FUMC Henrietta with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. Thank you. Um, I think that's all the announcements that I have for today, so uh, we invite you now to join with us in a spirit of prayer as we come together for worship. Let us pray. Open our ears, O oh God, that we might hear your word speaking to us in this moment. Open our minds, O oh God, that we might listen for your voice calling to us through scripture. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we might see your promises fulfilled to all who follow you. Open our hearts, O oh God, that we might enter into love you offer us. Amen. And now it is a uh, time for children. So Sophia, would you like to come on up for our child this time? Come on. I have with me today our special children's time slash chapel time bag. It is the tools that I use every Wednesday when I have the honor and the privilege to learn from our littlest disciples, the preschool students of Henrietta at UMC Preschool. And we start our time together by remembering that we have our tablecloth. Our tablecloth, that's right, Sophia. Our tablecloth that reminds us that this is a holy place, a special place, a place where we can grow closer to God. And then we have also in our bag, it's our it's our heart. Oh, we do also have the cross, that's right. Then what does the cross mean, Sophia? Do you remember? The cross means that Jesus loves me. That's right. So we have the heart, the heart for God who created us and who loves us. And we can squeeze it. The preschoolers like to remind me that it's a little broken because I, I need a lot of love from God. And then we have our cross that Sophia so graciously reminded us. It's for Jesus who loves us all and who gives us grace. And then Sophia, we've got one more thing. What's next? Do you remember? Well, let me see if I can find it. Oh, it's in here somewhere. There it is. What is it? What is it? Can you show them? Can you show the camera? Yeah, it's the bird. It's the Holy Spirit. That's right, Sophia. And the Holy Spirit brings us us together and unites us in God's love. So today is Valentine's Day, Sophia. Did you know that? Yeah, it's Valentine's Day. And today we get to share love with all people in the world. And we get to share love with the people who are closest to us. And did you know, Sophia, that your middle name means love? Yeah, you're great. Sophia, great. That's right. Sophia Grace, yeah. And grace means love. Grace is the gift of love that God gives all of us. Grace is love that's shown because God created us. Grace is the love that we see in Jesus Christ in his life, death, ministries, and resurrection. And grace is the Holy Spirit that brings us together, even when we are apart, to remind us that God is always 
working in and among us. So the Holy Spirit and Jesus and God are the Trinity, and the Trinity is this perfect example of God's love. So today on this Valentine's Day, remember that grace is freely given to you. Even if you make a mistake, grace will always be there, and God will love you no matter what. And remember, Sophia, you are blessed to be a blessing, and God loves you so very much. Y'all have a great and stay warm Valentine's Day. The scripture reading for this morning is from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Or, yeah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. Uh, listen now for the word of God as it's proclaimed by God's servant, the evangelist Mark. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For the past several weeks, we've been talking about what it means to be a disciple. As disciples, we commit ourselves to modeling our lives after the example of Jesus. Being a disciple is more than just learning from Jesus, it's about following Jesus. Even though there are obstacles that prevent us from following sometimes, God's grace is always at work, healing us and calling out to us. When I think of what it means to be a disciple, I think back to the very first adult Bible study that I participated in. I had just completed my first semester of college, and my sister Heather and my brother-in-law Jeff had invited me to join them for the rest of their year-long Disciple One Bible study class. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, Disciple One is designed to help people grow closer in their faith by going through the entire Bible throughout a year. I loved just about everything in this, about the class, the scripture readings, the deep conversations, the learning. I loved it so much that I took three more classes with that same group of disciples. It was also really challenging, because it seemed like not everyone else got it like I did. They would raise questions or struggle with a certain text or express doubt, and I just didn't see it that way. So I would helpfully jump in and say, well, in my experience, and then go on to explain what it was really all about. Taking that class was such a formative time in my faith. It helped me discern that God was calling me to become a pastor, but I don't look back on that time with rose-colored glasses. I had to learn one particularly hard lesson. Maybe you can already guess what that lesson is. I had to realize that I didn't have all the answers. I was 18, speaking to a room full of people who had way more life experience than I had at the time, who knew what it was like to suffer grief and loss, who knew what it was like to struggle with faith and doubt at the same time. I did all the readings and 
took careful notes of what the teachers said, but even though I thought I knew everything there was to know, clearly I had some growing to do. I thought that I had arrived. When it turns out, I was experiencing one of the most difficult aspects of following Jesus as a disciple, the tendency we have to get stuck in our faith. We see this tendency to get stuck in the words of the disciple Peter in the story of the scripture for today. In this, it's the story of Jesus taking a few of his closest disciples with him up a mountain, and Mark's gospel is sparse in its details about this. We hear that Jesus went to the top of the mountain with his disciples and was transfigured. The Greek word used to describe this event is the same one we use to describe what happens to tadpoles and caterpillars. It's the same word we use to describe a rock that's been changed from its original form to another. It was a metamorphosis. It was a change. The story of this metaphor metamorphosis, the story of transfiguration, is a strange one. It leaves us with more questions than answers. We're told that Peter, James, and John saw Jesus change before their eyes, but how? How did Jesus change? Moses and Elijah show up, but how do we know? Did they have name tags on? Did Jesus introduce them to the disciples? We don't know. What did that voice sound like? That voice that came from the clouds. And why, after all is said and done, did Jesus tell his disciples to keep quiet about what they had seen and heard? All we know is that in the face of these events, Peter almost got stuck in his faith. Because in response to Jesus' dazzling white clothes and conversation with the author of the law and one of the greatest prophets of the ancient scriptures, Peter didn't know what to say. And so Peter just shouted out, Rabbi, it's, it's good for us to be here. Let us build three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. In other words, let's stay here. Let's settle down and get comfortable. I have to wonder if part of the reason Peter wanted to stop and stay put was because he thought he had all the answers at that point. Maybe he felt that this encounter with God's presence, with Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, was the culmination of what it meant to be a disciple. Peter had followed Jesus to the mountaintop. It was all downhill from there, literally and spiritually. He had seen the first, firsthand the glory of God. What could be more than that? But God's grace didn't let Peter get stuck. Jesus didn't respond to Peter's request. Instead, a cloud appeared, covered the mountaintop, and a voice called out to say, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And then it was back down the mountain, back to the work of teaching and preaching and healing. What Peter didn't understand yet, what I didn't understand when I was taking that first disciple Bible study class at 18, is that God's grace is bigger and deeper than we could possibly imagine. Being a disciple of Jesus is about spending our life learning how to follow and helping others to follow. Together, we follow Jesus, not just up to the mountaintop moments, but through every valley as well. Together, 
we follow Jesus because when we stay put, when we stop growing, when we think that we have all the answers, that is when we are at risk of getting stuck in our faith. Instead, Jesus calls us to follow our entire lives. It's one of the reasons I love being a Methodist. It's because John Wesley understood that our faith is a lifelong journey. God's love is with us from our first breath until our last and beyond. God's love is with us before we're aware of it. Grace calls us to turn our lives towards God. And when we respond to that grace, when we follow where the voice of God leads, it grows us deeper in love with God. And as Methodists, we believe that we can always grow, grow closer to God. We always have more growing to do. We're constantly moving toward being made perfect in love. The more we say yes to God's call to follow, the more we realize there's so much more depth to God and to God's love than we could possibly imagine. Grace gives us the courage to keep learning and growing and changing as people. God gives us the freedom and power to continue to follow as disciples. The lesson that 18-year-old me had to learn is that discipleship is not about getting all of the answers right. Because that just leads us to getting stuck. Discipleship is a lifelong journey of wonder, and God is always inviting us to move forward, to keep going, to keep growing, to take the next step. I wonder, when was the last time you were stuck in your faith, or felt stuck in your faith? And then you encountered something that made you marvel and wonder in awe. Maybe you were out in nature, and you encountered the presence of God, and it reminded you of how small you are in, con in contrast to the bigness of the world. Maybe you were having a conversation or reading one of your favorite authors, and something sparked your imagination and fueled deep questions that changed how you saw the world. Or maybe it was a quiet and otherwise ordinary moment. Maybe in the living room or around the kitchen table, surrounded by loved ones, and you were struck with awe at how blessed you are. Maybe it was on a mountaintop, like the one described in the story of the Transfiguration. When I hear this story, I can't help but think of my time in Israel-Palestine with Pastor Jen on our class trip. We visited the Church of the Transfiguration. The church sits on top of a mountain where tradition says this story took place. The day started off cold and dreary, not anywhere near as cold and dreary as it is today, but still it was overcast and drizzly. It was one of those days where I would have rather stayed on a tour bus. We couldn't even see the top of the mountain because it was covered in fog-like clouds. I could have spent the day curled up in bed, reading a good book, sleeping, but here we were on this tour bus driving up the side of this mountain. We couldn't even see where we were going. But then, the clouds broke as soon as we got to the top of the mountain. It was a breathtaking sight. 
not only because the view of the valley below was absolutely gorgeous, not only because there was a rainbow in the sky left behind from the rain, but because the ground around the church was still wet from that rain. And when the sun shone on the ground, it was so bright, I had to look away. In that moment, I remembered the story of Jesus and his closest disciples. I remembered the story and I felt the presence of God. And all I could do was wonder. Because it was an invitation to take another step. It was an invitation to keep growing. To keep following. Wherever you are, faith journey today. You're invited, we are invited, to take the next step. That's the most important step that we take, the next one. Who knows, it might just lead to our own transfiguration. We now invite you to take a moment in silence to wonder how the voice of God is calling you in this moment. divine presence. With each encounter, we are changed and transformed. Draw us nearer, that we might receive a double portion of your Holy Spirit. Help us, O Holy One, to live our lives as reflections of your glory. May we walk among our brothers and sisters as a blessing, bearing light into dark places, hope into displaced despair, and love that casts out hate. As the winds of the cold blow, melt our hearts that we might care for those in our community who need to feel your warmth. Kindle within us a spirit of caring for those who do not have enough. Our world is hurting and you need us to follow more closely. Help us to hear your voice speaking and saying to us, listen to my child, the beloved, as we pray together the prayer your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The act of praise this morning is the summons, number 2130 uh, in the faith we sing. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let 
let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare, should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean, and do such as this unseen, and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you've found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me? Lord, your solemn echoes true in you, but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. We now invite you to join with us in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Daddy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Will you join with us once more in the spirit of prayer? Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day, for the gift of warmth and shelter, for the gift of your love that warms our hearts. God, we thank you for your love at work in our lives, changing us, growing us, loving us no matter what. Be with us this day and always. And may your gifts in our lives become an offering to you as we love you and serve all your children. All these things we pray in your holy name. Amen. 
Friends, thank you once again for joining us for worship. We invite you now to receive this blessing and benediction. Pastor Jen, will you join me for that? May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Blessings. Stay safe and stay warm. Thank you all for being flexible this morning. Bye.